Praise the Lord, President. Pastor Michael Jackson. Welcome to The Bible Speaks Live. Coming to you with a word from the Lord tonight. We pray that all is well between you and the Lord. We come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we know that He alone is able to do for you what no one else can do. We are streaming live right now on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, and on Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. You can go there to Spreaker.com. You will find all of our podcasts laid out neatly for you there. We have eight of the podcasts that we do produce, and they are all word-based. Amen. We are a word-based ministry, and we believe in the accuracy, and we believe in the Word of God above all things. You can also uh, find our podcasts on Spotify, Spreaker.com, as we said, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. You can also go to our website at that's the word.org and you will find all of our podcasts there. You can also go to our website, uh, rather our YouTube channel at that's the word uh, on our YouTube channel. And you can type in that's the word ministries or type in Pastor Michael J. So it'll bring you right to our YouTube channel. Amen. And so we praise the Lord. We thank him for once again giving us this opportunity uh, to share his word. We have a word from the Lord tonight that the Lord has laid on my heart the last few days. Uh, he's really been speaking to my heart concerning this particular subject, uh, and uh, we are going to uh, pursue that word tonight. Amen. We're going to pray and get right into the word of God for tonight. Lord, we bless your name, and we thank you once again for allowing us to be in your presence. We pray, Lord, that you might be with us as we open up your word, Lord Jesus. As always, Lord, we invite your presence to be here. Lord, we know that we can do nothing without you. And Lord, I pray that you might be the silent listeners to all that goes on. Lord, I pray that you might draw... Uh, individuals to you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray they might, they might be drawn to this location on the World Wide Web to hear your word, Lord Jesus. We want you to be lifted up above all. So, Lord, have your way. Bless us right now as we open up your word that we might be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. I want to turn you to the book of Luke, rather the book of Jude. Jude, and there's only one chapter, and we don't usually refer to it as a chapter. We just Turn to the book of Jude. Amen. The book of Jude. And we'll start in verse number one. We'll start in verse number one. Jude one. It says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace. And love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord once again bless the reading of his word. I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight about creepers, sleepers, and keepers. Creepers, sleepers, and keepers. And when it, be, when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to the word of God, all of us, those of us who are born again, those of us who are saved, all of us fall into one of those categories. You are either a creeper, you are either a sleeper, or you are a keeper. By the end of tonight, hopefully, you will know where you stand. You are either, I repeat, a creeper, a sleeper, or a keeper. Now we start off in the book of Jude. We we have to let you know that Jude was uh, a brother, a brother of Jesus Christ, a half brother of Jesus Christ. Same mother, different father. And also we talk of James in this first verse. Uh, he was also a half brother of Jesus, having the same mother and the a different father. And notice that Jude. And we talked about this several weeks ago when we spoke on another subject. Uh, we spoke on verse number two several weeks ago. Jude, and though he 
is the brother of Jesus by blood. He doesn't lift that up because his relationship with Jesus Christ, his spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ is and was more important to him than his physical relationship to Jesus. You know, Jesus said the one who does his will is his mother, his brother, and his uh, brother and sister and father. The one who does his will. And so family, blood relationship stands for a lot. But when you know the Lord, the fact that we have the blood of Jesus in common is much more and is of greater importance. So Jude identifies himself first and foremost as a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James to them that are, and this lets us know who he's speaking to, he says to them that are sanctified. To them that are sanctified, he says, number one, and those who are preserved. Thirdly, he says, those who are called. Those are three categories that all of us who are born again fit into. We are sanctified, we are preserved, and we are called. And then he gives his remarks about mercy and peace and love be multiplied. Not added, but multiplied to us. Now, when we get into verse number three, still, obviously, he's talking to those who are born again. And he lets us know the purpose of his writing. He says, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was his original plan, his original plan. Notice now, it was his original plan to write about the common salvation. What is the common salvation? The common salvation is the salvation that we all share. The salvation that we all share. Titus chapter 1 and verse number 4 talks about a common faith. We all came to Christ in the same way. We all had to come through Jesus. We all came by grace through faith. That's how all of us come to Christ. And he said, when I first wanted to come to you, write to you, I wanted to write to you concerning this common salvation that we all share. And I'm sure that he was going to talk about the greatness of the salvation that we share as the writer of Hebrews, which is probably Paul the Apostle, as he spoke about uh, this great salvation. He wanted to speak on it, but he found it necessary to change the course, to change the direction, the topic of what he was going to write. Because here's what he says. He says, it was needful for me. It was expedient. It was necessary for me to write unto you and exhort you. In other words, he says, it was necessary for me to encourage you, uh, to urge you, to make my appeal to you on something else. There was something else that was happening in the Christian community that he needed to address. And he wanted to encourage the believers to be on the lookout, and to beware of what was happening. You see, Jude was on the, let me use this phrase, Jude was on the cutting edge of what was happening. He was on the cutting edge of what was going on in the church. Jesus Christ being his <laughs> blood brother, he was very aware of what was at stake. And he says, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should, he gave them something that they needed to do. And what he's going to talk about in these next few verses, we're not going to go through the whole book. These We're going to concentrate on two verses. But what he is going to talk about is something that we are all dealing with in the Christian community right now. Whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, we are there. We are right here where Jude is talking about. And he says, I need for you, it is urgent that you, he says, I want you to earnestly contend for the faith. Earnestly contend for the faith. He wants them to diligently, he wants them to tenaciously work, work to keep to hold, to guard, to protect, to defend the faith. This word, this word, earnestly contend, uh, has the has the uh, uh, has the understanding that it is it is it gives you the idea of someone who is standing over 
a thing to watch over it, to guard it, to defend it. And he's saying, I need for you to earnestly guard and watch over the faith. We'll get back to this thought in, in a bit. But he makes this statement. He says, I need for you to earnestly contend for the faith. The faith. What is the faith? He is not talking about here when you put your trust in the Lord. He's not talking about having faith. No, this is, this is not that type of faith he's talking about. He is talking of the body of truth. The entire body of truth that makes up what we call Christianity. That is the faith. Where are you as it concerns the faith? Let me say what it is again. It is the body of truth, which is the word of God. It is that body of truth that makes up what we call Christianity. Every doctrine, every teaching, every word that makes up this great salvation, this great Christianity that we live by is the faith. How do you view the faith? Do you contend for the faith? You see, because here's the problem. Here's the problem. Number one, he says there are certain men crept in. Certain men crept in. There are certain individuals. There are many false teachings in the church. There are many false teachers in the church. The amount of false teachers and teachings we have are many. However, no matter how many they are, they are just certain ones. In other words, there are many but compared to the truth that we have, compared to those who teach the truth, it is few. Certain men, certain men, which means they are a minority. But even if a minority bands together, they become strong. Even if a minority bands together, they become strong. It's the illustration of a thread, a thread, a simple piece of thread, one thin line. If you take a piece of thread and wrap it around your wrist one time, you will break it. You will break it. If you wrap it around two or three times, you will be able to break it. But if you take that same thin thread and wrap it around your wrist, Several times, keep going around, the whole spool, just keep going around. That thin thread wrapped around your wrist so many times, it becomes like a chain. You will not break it. And that's the same way with false doctrine. Even though there are just a few individuals compared to the many, they become strong when they unite. And he says there are certain men, certain individuals who have crept in. That word crept carries the idea of sneaking in, has the idea of, of sort of uh, uh, coming in through a, a side door. It has the, it has the uh, uh, implication of something uh, that is... Simply coming in unnoticed. Unnoticed. So, are you a creeper? What is a creeper? Someone who comes with false truth. Someone who comes in with fake news about Jesus. 
someone who carries with them error, someone who tries to bring forth false teaching to the masses. That is a creeper, a creeper. Now, I still, I will say that there is a difference between somebody who is a, a false teacher who deliberately tries to pull the wool over individuals' eyes. And they exist. They are, we, the church has them. Individuals who are not born again, who are not saved, these creepers right here, they're ungodly men, as the book of Jude goes on to say, they're ungodly, and their path is marked out, and they will have their day. They will be judged for what they have done. There are individuals in the church who deliberately try to, to fleece God's people. Sorry to say. But it's a fact. Because Jesus said, Paul said that these people would exist. They are here. But there's a difference between someone who is deliberately trying to infiltrate the church to bring false teaching for their own betterment, for their own good, uh, because they're trying to gain money, as the book of Jude will go on to say. They fall, in, they fall into the error of Cain and the error of Balaam. Uh, and and they, they have gone the wrong way. But somebody who errs from the truth. The Bible talks about individuals who turn from the truth and err from the truth. Err from the truth means to deviate. It means to go in another direction. Yes, that's what false teachers have done. But they do it in, intentionally. And they know better. But they do it for gain. Somebody who errs from the truth may really believe that they are teaching truth. And they go in another direction, away from truth. And that individual must never think that they are being upheld, that they are being pushed along and carried along by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does not promote false teaching. Never will, never has. If you are involved in false teaching, if you, if you are involved in error, if you are teaching another gospel, another Jesus, if you are promoting thoughts and ideas and practices that are unbiblical, the Holy Ghost is not showing you the way. The Holy Ghost is not leading you. You have led yourself away. So there's a difference. The difference may be slight. The difference may be very slight. But I believe there's a difference between a a true false teacher with bad intentions and somebody who errs from the truth. Who, it's still wrong, it's still sin, but they truly believe that they are doing the right thing and they err from the truth. It needs to be corrected and the Holy Ghost will do that. But if you're a creeper, you know better, you've seen better, You've been to the right place, but you have turned from the truth. That's the creeper. The creeper does what he does for monetary gain. The creeper does what he does uh, for fame and fortune. The creeper does what he does to, to become noticed. That's what the creeper does. And God forbid if you are a creeper. God forbid if you are a creeper. God forbid if you are somebody trying to pull the wool over Christians' eyes. Because there are some Christians who are asleep at the wheel. And that brings us to our second individual. We're talking tonight about creepers, sleepers, and keepers. Notice that it says that these certain men have crept in, they've snuck in, they've infiltrated the church, and they've come in unnoticed, unaware. Nobody knows it. Nobody realizes it. Nobody, nobody realizes that there is a snake or a creeper amongst them. Nobody knows it. How does this happen? How does this happen? We've already said it. Because Christians are asleep. They are asleep. Where are they asleep? They're asleep at the word. Asleep at the the word. The church is rife. The church is rife with 
biblical illiteracy. Mark it. The church is ripe with biblical illiteracy. Folk don't know. Folk in the church. Folk who are born again. I'm not talking about the unsaved Christian right now. That's, that's, that's a different group altogether. The unsaved Christian, you do not expect the unsaved Christian to know anything about the word, even though they do. But they're not born again. They're not saved. They don't really know the Lord. They think they do, but they don't. And the church is full of those individuals also. But we're not talking about those. We're talking about honest to goodness, died in the wool, Holy Ghost filled Christians who are asleep at the word knocked out don't know what the word says anything that anybody that says Jesus must be of God must be of God if they make you smile if they make you laugh if they make you shout if they make you dance they must be telling the truth Christians are asleep at the word and they get put to sleep put to sleep by creepers because creepers speak well. Creepers talk a good game. Creepers can take you through the word. Can take you through the word. A, B, C, N, D. They can take you through the word. And have you applauding. And have you saying amen. And have you shouting. And have you dancing. And then they lower the boom. And start telling you things that are not true. But you've already gotten so deep in with them and their message that you accept everything they say. It happens. I've seen it. I know. It happens. Don't be a sleeper. Don't sleep at the word. Be aware. In other words, let me put it this way. Not, not, let me use the biblical word. Be a discerning Christian. Be a discerning Christian. Be a Christian who knows left from right. Be a Christian that knows up from down. Be a Christian that knows right from wrong. Be a Christian that knows truth from error. The only way that you are going to become a discerning Christian is through the careful study of the word of God. And this, unfortunately, is not something that everyone wants to do. We're happy with listen, we're happy with just allowing the pastor to speak to us and we take him at his word because he's the pastor and he knows what he's talking about and I'll take his word for it. And we go on our way. Not realizing sometimes not all the time, of course not. But not realizing, not realizing that sometimes we've been fed a bill of goods that are that is not biblical, not scriptural. You have to be careful. You have to be careful who you allow to speak into your life. You must be careful as to who you allow to speak into your life. There are charlatans that exist and they want to pull you in. You have to be wiser. You have to be more intelligent. You have to be more discerning than that. And the only way that you will find discernment to be built up in your life is by the level of the word of God that you intake into your life. That's how your discernment is built up. Become a student of the word. I didn't say become a Bible scholar. I didn't say go and get your PhD and doctorate in, in, in biblical. No, you don't have to do all that. Read the word for yourself. Ask the Lord to show you truth. Show you the truth. That's it. Lord, teach me your way. Show me your word. Open up your word. Every time you open up the word of God, Lord, open up your word to me. Help me to see. Help me to know. Help me to understand. That's your prayer as you open up the word of God. Don't just read to read. 
Don't just read because it's expected of you. Don't just read the word of God because it's what you should do and what you're supposed to do. Don't read the word for those reasons. I'm not saying you won't be blessed, but don't read just for those reasons. Read the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter one, uh, Psalm 119, and read the love that David had for the word. He loved the word of God. He did not sleep on it. No. He says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He said, your word is sweeter also than honey and a honeycomb. He loved the word of God. And he would not dare sleep on it. Now understand what we mean by sleeping on it. We mean not being aware, not being careful, not being careful. Read it to understand it. You can read, you can read as devotion. Lord, speak to my heart. But then you can read, Lord, show me what this means. Everything in the Bible has a purpose. Every single line, every single word has a meaning and a purpose. Even even the book of Numbers has a purpose. Even the book of Leviticus, of course, has a purpose. Even those books where you say, what is the meaning of this? These different names, these different locations, these different numbers. What does it mean? It all ties together. It all has a purpose. Lord, show me your word. Show me your word. Don't be a sleeper at the word. So you have creepers, those who bring a bad word into the house of God, those who bring a false word, those who bring a lying word into the house of God, make it appealing to those who listen. And then you have the sleepers who will take in everything. And when the creeper comes in, they won't even realize that it's a creeper. Because they're asleep at the word. Here's where we need to be. Here's where we need to be. We need to be keepers of the word. Keepers of the word. Here's what it says. We read it already. He says, earnestly contend for the faith. Earnestly contend for the faith. Uphold. Defend. The word of God. That's your job. That's my job. How do we uphold? How do we defend the word of God? How do we do it? By aligning ourselves according to the word. By living our lives according to the precepts that we find in the word of God. By living an exemplary life in front of the world. Living properly in front of those who are watching us, waiting for us to slip up and mess up and do something wrong. Live the life in front of the world. Of course you're not going to be perfect. Of course you're not going to get it right. But show them, when you get it wrong, show them who your Jesus is. Show them that you, have a God, that you serve a God of compassion. That you serve a God of mercy. That you serve a God that says, great is thy, that says, that, that, that gives us, a, he's faithful to us. Show the world who Jesus is. Let your life, let your life be a living testimony as to the goodness and graciousness of the Lord. Let your light, <laughs> let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light, let your life shine. That's how you keep the word. Keep the word. Protect it. Protect the word from all hurt, harm, and danger. Listen, the word of God will last forever. The, no, listen, there's nothing, there's nothing that can bring down the word of God. Nothing. The word of God is truth. And his truth stands. His truth is eternal. You change. I change. The world changes. The word does not change. 
just like himself. He does not change. Jesus Christ, who is the word. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We need to keep the word. Keep the word. If you're not keeping the word, if you're not keeping the word, if you're not upholding the word by your lifestyle, if you're not defending the word, uh, defending the truths of the gospel, then you might be sleeping on it. You might be sleeping on it. We want to make sure that the world sees who Jesus is. The word of God will show them who Jesus is. Let us keep the word. Lord, I don't want to be a creeper. Lord, I definitely don't want to be a sleeper. I want to be a keeper of your word. He says, these certain men have crept in unawares before of old, ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. There are many who have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. They've said that, they've said that because you are under God's grace that you can live any way you want because our God is gracious. This is a lie from the pit of hell. You cannot and you must not. You must Keep the word. A creeper will not. A creeper will not advise you to live the word in that way. We must be honest. We must be honest with ourselves. We must be honest with the Lord. Lord, I don't want to be a creeper. Lord, I don't want to be a sleeper. Lord, I want to be a keeper of your word. A keeper of your word. So where are you tonight? Where do you stand? Are you a creeper? Sleeper? Or a keeper? Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. We bless your name tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that we are found in your kingdom as keepers of your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, we don't want any word. We don't want not one word to, to slip. Lord, we want to obey, we want to follow, we want to align yourself, align ourselves, Lord Jesus, with your word, Lord Jesus. This is the only way that we want to live, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, have your way. Lord, we don't want to be sleepers. Lord, we don't want to, we don't want to be sleep, asleep at the word, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to stand firm and let nothing move us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we definitely do not want to be creepers, Lord Jesus. Lord, we don't want to be purveyors of non-truth. Lord, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to bring a uh, a false teaching into God's house and God's people because surely we will be held accountable Lord we want to spread your word in truth Lord Jesus Lord we want to give your people the knowledge of the truth as we spread your word help us to be ever so careful uh, to give your word and not our own Lord Jesus have your way bless us Lord anyone out who is not saved tonight, Lord Jesus, who does not know you. Lord, I pray that you will draw them unto yourself, Lord Jesus. Lord, have your way. Speak, Lord Jesus, as only you can speak, Lord Jesus. Lord, let this word, I pray, permeate every heart and every soul that hears this word on this night, Lord Jesus. Lord, have your way. There are many who are listening and watching uh, at different locations around uh, the world, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that this word might be opened up to them in a very special way, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to be keepers of your word. Lord, have your way. Bless us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank him. Uh, we thank him so much uh, for the opportunities that he gives us uh, to speak and to preach and to teach his word. It, it is it is an opportunity. And we do not, we do not take it lightly. We do not take it lightly, uh, this, re this responsibility of carrying forth his word. It is an honor and it is an awesome uh, responsibility. Amen. And we pray that you will continue to pray for us. Pray for us as we continue to spread the word of the cross. The word of the cross that everyone needs to hear. You can hear all of our podcasts once again over Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. Uh, you will see eight other podcasts. You just go to Spreaker.com 
and type in Pastor Michael Jakes and that will bring you to our page and you will find all of our podcasts and you will find them and, and I pray that you'll be blessed as you listen. You can also go to our website at that's the word.org. You will find all of our podcasts and don't forget about our blog. You'll find our blog there also. And you can also go to our YouTube channel. Type in That's the Word Ministries or Pastor Michael Jakes and I will bring you right to our YouTube channel. Amen. Now, don't forget, don't forget tomorrow night we'll be ending our uh, study that we've been in for several months on spiritual warfare, uh, the fight of faith. We're going to tie it all together, and we're going to talk about the bottom line. What's the bottom line on spiritual warfare? That's on tomorrow night, and I pray that you will invite somebody to listen, and I know that you will be blessed, because next week, next week we're beginning a brand new study uh, on false teachers. <laughs> false teachers. We're going to go right back at it once again in our Bible study. Amen. It's a very, once again, it's a very hot topic, very much a hot topic. Uh, and uh, we're going to hear some things and learn some things, maybe some things you've never heard, maybe some things you di didn't know, uh, but uh, we'll name some names and we'll we'll talk about it and, and we'll pray that the Lord will be with us as we speak. Amen. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes. Thank you once again for watching. Thank you for joining us. Once again, you can go to Spreaker.com and let's do all of our podcasts again. And don't forget to go to our YouTube channel. That's The Word Ministries. I know that you will be blessed. This is me. That's you. Take care. We'll see you next time. May God bless you.